In this video, we're going to continue with our proofs of limit laws. In this one, we're going to prove that the limit of the power is the power of limits, at least for natural number powers. So that was uh, property 7. So we're given that the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l. Now, we actually are going to use the technique of proof by induction here. So I'm going to try to explain that a little bit. And we're going to actually just using the power rule, uh, the, the product rule, uh, property number four that we had proved earlier. So we, we won't see any deltas and epsilons in this proof, but you will see a technique uh, that I need to explain. And that technique is the, the uh, proof by induction. The way a proof by induction works, it's kind of like climbing a ladder. And to climb a ladder, you have two skills. You need to know how to get on the ladder on the first rung. And then you need to know how to go from one rung to a subsequent rung. If you know those two skills, in theory, you could climb a ladder indefinitely. So it, this is what we're going to have. Uh, we want to show that the limit is if uh, x approaches c of f of x to the n equals l to the n if n is a natural number. And we're, where we're given that uh, the limit is x approaches c of f of x is l. Now, the basis step is the getting on the ladder step. So you want to prove that this is true for, for the lowest number in your list. The lowest natural number is 1. And certainly if this is just 1, that's just the hypothesis. But we also know from property 4 that we've already proved this when n is 2 as well because when n is 2, this is just f of x times f of x. And then we apply that rule, then it's just l times l or l square is the um, is the result. So we've, we've proved this for property 1 and 2 already. So once you start it for one case, um, then we can apply the induction step. And the induction step says, suppose we're on any, run of one, any one rung of the ladder, how do we go one rung higher? If we can prove that we can do that no matter what, then we can climb the ladder, Okay, using our analogy there. So what we're going to do is we're going to have what we call our induction hypothesis that says, Suppose that the limit is true, that this function, that this is true, that, the, that as x goes to c, this limit of f of x to the n is l to the n for some particular value of m, n. Let's call that particular value m. And then what you do is you let n be 1 higher than that, m plus 1. So now we want to look at that limit. So we want to do the limit as x approaches c of f of x to the n, but n is m plus 1. Well, f of x to the m plus 1 power is f of x to the m times f of x. Now we have a product of two things. So we can apply property 4 that says the limit of that product is a product of these two limits provided they both exist. Well, the one on the right certainly exists. That's our by hypothesis. That's just L. And our induction hypothesis says the one on the left exists, and it's just L to the m. And of course, L to the m times L to the first is L to the m plus 1, which is L to the m. And so that said, so we showed that if this, if this is true if here for this particular n equals m, then we also get the same result as true when n equals 1 higher. So it shows if it's true for 2, then it's true for n equals four, 3. And if it's true for 3, it's true for 4. And if it's true for 4, it's true for 5. And if it's true for 5, it's true for 6, and so forth and so on. So the principle of mathematical induction says, well, hey, if you can do this every time, then it's true for any natural number n. All right, that's the first part. That proves it's for natural numbers. Now, what if n is a, a 0? Well, if we take f of x to the n, that's f of x to the 0, which is just 1 for everything except for when l is a 0. And that is uh, l to the 0, which is l to the n, which is 1. And certainly that's, that's going to be true. Uh, at least if L is not 0, that will be true. In the case L is yeah, N is uh, 0. Now suppose, so we basically got it true for 0 and for natural number powers. What about for negative integer powers? So we've got it true, we've shown it's true for power 0 and 1, 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and so on. But what about negative 1, negative 2, negative 3? So this time we're going to suppose n is the opposite of m, where m is a positive natural number, a, a, a positive integer. 
and so n is a negative number. And again, we're going to assume the L is not zero in this case. So then we got f of the limit as x approaches c of f of x to the n is the limit as x approaches c of f of x to the minus m, and this time m is a positive. So f of x to the minus m is 1 over f of x to the m. Now property 5 says the limit of a reciprocal is the reciprocal of the limit provided that limit exists. But the denominator, we know that one exists because that's our part A that we did, our proof for reduction we just did, shows that that limit at the bottom is L to the M. And of course, 1 over L to the M is L to the minus M, which is L to the N. And so we got our result is true there. And so we've now proved this is true, at least for all integer powers. And what do we prove? We prove that, that the limit uh, actually, we is, is right here, that the limit as x approaches c of f of x to the n is l to the n when that limit is l anytime n is any natural number. We'll go on to the next video to prove, uh, go back to proving that the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits, but this time we're going to let x approach, uh, not approach c, but approach infinity.